Three of the figures that must be cast separately are removed from their position atop the gates, the three shades representing lost souls from Dante's hell. They will be cast individually in the process Rodin would have wished, the lost wax process. It is the only way for 20th century craftsmen to remain faithful to Rodin's original. The first step in making a mold is to surround the plaster with hard rubber. Then an artisan applies a layer of liquid rubber to the entire plaster model. The rubber will embrace every nuance of the sculptor's work, right down to Rodin's fingerprints embedded in the plaster. When it has dried, it will have captured the sculpture in its minutest detail. A coarse compound is applied which will strengthen the rubber mold. Then fiberglass is added to provide a sturdy backing. Though the process of casting in bronze is an ancient one, it has been enhanced with materials which did not even exist in Rodin's time. When the mold has dried, it is taken apart in sections. Rodin's plaster will now be removed. It will no longer be used. For, faithful to it in every detail, the rubber mold has formed a perfect negative image of the plaster. After the rubber mold is reassembled, it is filled with a cement-like substance. The substance hardens. Eventually, it will become the core of the bronze statue. When the fiberglass mold is removed, the hardened core has become a replica of the plaster figure. The core serves a special purpose. A thickness is meticulously removed from every part of the statue. The process is both risky and painstaking, demanding the talents of a sculptor from the craftsman who performs it. For the thickness he removes will eventually become the thickness of the bronze itself. After the entire core has been scraped, a protective coating is applied which will prevent the core from crumbling in the intense heat. The scraped down core is now placed back inside the rubber mold. The space between the mold that was made from the plaster statue and the scraped down core, appearing as a crack, will eventually be filled with bronze. But before the bronze can be poured, there is another step that gives the lost wax process its name. Melted wax is poured into the space that exists between the rubber outer mold and the inner core. The mold is removed. A perfect wax of Rodin's plaster is revealed. Working with sculpting tools like those Rodin himself used, the craftsman compares the wax with the plaster. He corrects the most minute imperfections, for any blemishes in the wax would be cast into the finished bronze. When every correction has been made, a heat-resistant compound is sprayed over both the wax and a network of conduits which have been added. Those conduits will eventually allow the wax to flow out and the bronze to flow in. The sprayed-on compound hardens to form a ceramic mold. After several days of curing, the ceramic mold is placed in a kiln and baked. The heat of the kiln hardens the mold and, at the same time, begins to melt the wax inside. Under the heat of blowtorches, the craftsmen melt out the last remnant of the perfect wax of Rodin's sculpture hidden within the ceramic mold. The wax trickles out in the heat, earning the lost wax process its name. The hollow space inside, left by the melting wax, will soon be filled with liquid bronze. A concrete cocoon is built around the ceramic mold and braced with steel mesh to contain the enormous heat and pressure the pouring of the bronze will generate. Without it, the mold could explode, 
had months of labor be lost. It is lowered into a pit ready for casting. In the intense heat of the crucible, the bronze is brought to a molten state. The process is closely monitored by the practiced eye of a craftsman who has learned to judge the subtle moods of the volatile metal. It is also measured by space age sensors. Temperature reaches 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. The time for the pouring has come. The workers position the container of metal over the mold, judge the exact moment, then unleash the energy of molten bronze. The mold is removed from the firing pit and broken apart. The blows of the hammer will reveal the first glimpse of the completed bronze statue buried within it. But the grace of Rodin's creation still seems far away. The figure ungainly, even grotesque. Like a loving father, Jean Bernard sees the potential of his ungainly offspring. The conduits that have been added for the casting process are cut away to free the figure within. The bronze, still scarred, must be corrected with a sculptor's eye. A few precise blows of a hammer, the heat of a welding torch, will erase the final imperfections. Cast individually, the three shades are positioned so they can be welded together. Only when the most minute blemishes have been removed will the glory of Rodin's vision emerge. The three shades will be matched up with the original plasters. Then it is time to apply the finishing touch to the bronze. Under the heat of a blowtorch, metal oxides are applied in layers. With this finish, known as the patina, the craftsman will bring out the full richness of the metal. At last, out of the steam and scorching heat, the three shades unite into the artist's vision.